Dogs and humans have a truly amazing bond. Astonishing abilities, companionship and utter loyalty make dogs our best friends. In this series, we investigate the surprising science behind these impressive beings. From rescue dogs, to fire dogs, to the dog next door. What makes dogs so extraordinary? In the power of movement, we examine dogs' extraordinary physical agility. A dog's agility is far superior to human beings. They can sprint over terrain we would struggle to stand on, never mind move. Dogs thrive in any environment and are able to adapt to their surroundings in remarkable ways. We meet Zoe and Vera, water-loving dogs who help the Italian Coast Guard save drowning swimmers. We join a search and rescue team in New Zealand as they put their dogs through demanding training sessions. We can clear an area that might take humans um, a day to clear, we can clear it in half an hour. And we race with a musher and his team for Australia's toughest and only snow-based sled dog race. We're back, we've finished, we finished well. Uh, dogs are happy, it's great. This is Extraordinary Dogs. With the peak season over, the Italian lakes look calm and serene. Hard to imagine that these waters in the summer are crammed with thousands of bathers. Lifeguards must patrol the waters. Among them is a dog called Zoe. She is one of the best in the business. Amazingly, she can swim over four kilometers, jump out of a helicopter into the lake, and pull dinghies with her teeth. Zoe is a graduate of the Italian School of Water Rescue Dogs, set up by Ferruccio Palenga. Using their extraordinary abilities, these dogs have saved over 20 lives in the last year alone. Io ho 21 anni fa un volontario di protezione civile, volevo prendere un cane, avevo letto su un vecchissimo libro che i Terranova erano cani a salvataggio. With the famous doggy paddle named after them, one would think that swimming was common to all dogs. However, some are vastly better than others. Newfoundlands, Labradors and Retrievers with their large size are the Olympians of canine swimming and make the best dog lifeguards. But their size, power and natural love of the water are not enough. To become lifeguards, they need to train. At the beginning, uh, uh, the first thing that uh, a dog has to learn is how, is how to swim. Because um, then we have uh, uh, some specific exercises that we have to follow. The most important thing is that uh, they have to be happy to work. It's a, it's a game for them, it's a game for us. And it's not just swimming. They have to learn how to jump into the lake from heights of up to five meters, from a moving helicopter. Today, the team are holding a refresher training course at Lake Iseo in Lombardy. I nostri cani, al giorno d'oggi, sono partiamo dai più importanti, imbarcati sui mezzi della Guardia Costiera e ogni anno, quando abbiamo più cani, riusciamo a dare più cani alla Guardia Costiera. Before the dogs take to the air, they must get used to the noise and alarming rotor blades of the helicopter. Vera and handler Bettina are one of the teams taking part in today's exercise. Vera hasn't done helicopter training before, but she has done a lot of water work. We started when she was only a puppy and she's very good now. <laughs> Newfoundlands are built for water rescue work. They have the instinct for it and we definitely want to keep it that way. The helicopter hovers above the water. Bettina will jump first, followed by Vera. Whether the dog jumps with or without their handler is based on how experienced they are. Once in the water, 
Vera must navigate through the choppy waves created by the helicopter and swim a distance of up to one kilometer to the test person who is pretending to drown. Distance swimming is one of the key areas of training and the dogs need to be able to perform rescues for up to four kilometers. Newfoundlands like Vera have a large powerful tail and feet with a degree of webbing. She has a paw 9 cm long and 11.5 cm wide, which gives her a powerful thrust with every stroke. Studies have suggested that dogs are one of the few non-aquatic mammals that can hold their breath. This helps them perform even if their head is immersed by protecting the larynx from the entry of water into their lungs. Vera also has a thick waterproof coat which protects her from the cold when swimming. <laughs> Newfoundlands also have very, um, very big lung capacity which helps them swim long distances. Dogs that are good at swimming have very mobile joints. Most of their joints tend to be more lax, which is a good thing for swimming. Some of the best swimming dogs might be in the top 25% of uh, you know, elite swimming people in terms of speed. Zoe and Renato are also amongst the teams practicing today. They need to complete a variety of swimming distances. The dogs must be capable of swimming while dragging an adult human swimmer for up to an hour in rough waters. With the dog supporting the victim, the handler is able to perform procedures such as mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation while floating in the water. The dogs also have to help pull boats when assisting in a rescue operation. The Newfoundland's large skeleton and muscles give them the power to take on difficult swimming conditions. Thankfully their jaw can handle the pressure. It can exert double the power of a human jaw. Alcune prove che ho fatto noi non hanno un limite, ne ho fatto anche 20, 30 persone, cani con imbragatura galleggiante, poi mocchiai senza problemi tra quattro persone verso riva. As the summer season approaches, Zoe will again be helping save dozens of lives in the lakes and seas off the Italian coast. As happy in the water as she is on dry land, Zoe's extraordinary talents have transformed Italian life-saving practices. <laughs>